Welcome to working with single sample chops. Channel operators are made up of both channels and samples, and understanding the difference can help us as we're learning Touch Designer. Let's take a look at how we can tell if we're working with a single sample chop and what we might do with it. So to begin, let's add an LFO here in our network, and let's also add a pattern chop here in our network. Now we'll make a few changes here. What we might want to do here in our pattern chop is change this length to say something like 60. We can make it if you were active with the A key and turn on our dots per sample with a D key. And what we'll see here is that we have a dot for every sample that's here inside of our channel. So Chan 1 is just a single channel, but it contains 60 samples. And we can see that with this uh, line graph that we see here inside of our op operators viewer. Now our LFO we see is just a bar graph. And so here, if we actually middle mouse click on our LFO, we'll see that this is currently made up of one sample or one frame or 0.2 seconds. We'll notice that this is sometimes two frames or it could be slightly more than two frames. And that's because a time slice operator has some special kind of conditions that we can take advantage of. Here, our pattern chop is made up of 60 samples, which we could also think of as 60 frames or one second. Well, what can we do with this LFO? We might start by adding something like a count chop here to the network. Now, our count chop has a few different inputs, and if we connect our LFO to the first input, we'll notice that it starts counting. Well, if we look at the count page, we'll see that we count, we increase our count whenever we cross from off to on. So every time we go from below zero to above zero, we increment our value. Now, we could also choose to decrease the count. That would be another thing that we could do here. Let's leave this at increase count right now, and let's also add a constant chop here to our network. Now our constant chop, let's go ahead and change the name of this channel to increment. And what we'll do is we can set this to be say 15. Now we'll notice that our count chop has several inputs and the third input is an increment value. So if we connect this 15 to that increment value and reset our count chop, we'll see that now we count by 15 every time we increment. Let's connect a null chop here and let's see if we can use that. So we might use, say, uh, use this by adding a circle top to our network. Let's go ahead and say, turn on polygon and turn sides to say something like six. And now we might grab this channel and go ahead and set that to be the rotation value for our circle top. Now, if we wanted this to spin the other direction, we might go ahead and change this to be a negative value. And now we'll count in the opposite direction. And this is great. This is one of the ways that we might use this idea. Well, let's take a look at another way that we might use this. We'll add another LFO chop here into our network, and this time we'll change the LFO to be just say a square type. We're gonna change this frequency to 0 0.125. We're gonna change this amplitude to 0 0.5, and let's go ahead and connect that to a null chop as well. Now, I wanna see this as a graph, so I'm gonna add a trail, because this is gonna be a nice way to actually see what's happening over time here. And I want to think about how I could use this information. So let's go ahead and add, say, a rectangle top here into our network. And let's go ahead and make our rectangle a little bit skinnier, say zero point, maybe 0 0.1 here for us. We're going to grab this Chan 1. We're going to use that for the center uh, parameter here, our center X parameter. And now we get something that looks like it goes from just the left side to the right side of our rectangle. Well, I'd like to actually influence this in a slightly different way. So what might we do here? Well, let's make a little more room and let's add a filter chop here into our network. Now, the filter chop is interesting because our filter chop is actually going to allow us to have a little bit of a curve. And if we add this to our trail, we'll see what that looks like. We'll see that we have this ease in, ease out kind of behavior. We have this Gaussian uh, type. If we connect that up to our null, we'll now see that influences the animation of our rectangle which is pretty great. Now, I'd like to actually look at a different type of animation. So let's go ahead and maybe uh, copy our null and our rectangle. And we'll rearrange these slightly so we can see a few of these side by side. So I'm going to move my rectangle over here, my rectangle one, my rectangle two, I'm going to bring over here. So these are doing the same thing right now. Let's add, say, a lag chop into our network. And our lag chop has a slightly different type of smoothing behavior. So we'll connect our LFO to our lag. We'll connect our lag to our null, and then we're going to go ahead and make our null three viewer active. Grab that Chan one, bring it over to rectangle two, and then assign it to center and use that as the center X parameter. Now we'll see that we have something that looks more like inertia with this movement. And in fact, if we connect this lag here to our trail, we'll be able to compare what those animation curves look like. Now, there are lots of ways that we can think about using single sample chops or time slice chops. And this is one of the important ones is that anytime we want to control a parameter or think about animation, 
more often than not, we actually want to think about how we use something in the single sample or the time slice domain because it allows us to build these kinds of curves that we use for parameters.